Okay, up to now, our Arduino doesn't really make sense. We, we programmed that we push the button, then the LED is turned on. Well, you know, we would have this for a much cheaper price and without Arduino, without control, controller, we would you have the same. No issue about this. Yeah. Now we come to a point, now that we can read inputs, put out outputs, we just have to change the code inside our Arduino and it's doing something different. Yeah, that's the nice thing. So what it should do, and I show you, yeah, what it should do now in your next task is if I press the button, the button is on. Wow, yeah, that's like before. However, if I now release the button, it stays on. The button press is stored. Okay. And if I press the button a second time, it's off again. And if you release the button a second time, it stays off. So the button should work as on-off button. Yeah? So you can turn on the light and turn off the light. Now this controller makes sense. Yeah? One button to turn it on and turn it off. It's not that easy as it looks like. I mean, the function, the function is pretty easy, but the coding, you know, you have to distinguish if the button was already pressed or not, because you have to find out somehow, press the button, if this is a new button press, because then you have to change the light. Yeah. Right now, I still press the button and nothing is changing. Yeah. You have to find out in your code somehow, you have to remember if the button was pressed in the last cycle or not, because if I release it, nothing should happen. And if now, if the new button press, if I press this button a second time, a new time, yeah. So if it was not pressed in the cycle before, something is happening. Yeah? So you have to remember how uh, somehow the old status. Yeah? So you have to have an an variable where you can remember. This is the program. Uh, this is the program. So, um, if you want to save the old button state, the issue with such variables, with local variables, is that they will forget their old value. So, if the loop is starting new, the the variable, even if it has the same name, is a new variable and has therefore another value. Simply, yeah? you can simply use and global variable, old button state, global, yeah, and store it there, the old value. This will not be new every time because this is defined outside as a so-called global variable. And so if you write it here, next time you come, if you write it somewhere here, and next time you appear at the top, it will still have the same value because it's not defined new. It's not a new variable, it's the old variable. The advantage of such uh, global variables is that you can access them in all your uh, subroutines, in all your functions. So if you would like to write it in setup also, you can write it in setup also. However, maybe you are preferring that you store your old button state in a local variable, like this int old button state. Mm -hmm. The issue with this uh, definition is that it will forget. Yeah? Even if you write here old button state is like button state, if you come to the top, this will be a new variable. Yeah? You can prevent this by writing static in front of it. Yeah? Static indicates this should not be erased. Yeah, so this variable should be static in the memory. Then it kind of works like an, a global variable. Yeah. It will not forget. It's not an Alzheimer's variable, if this is an appropriate joke. Uh, but the difference to a global variable is that outside the loop, because it's defined in loop and outside the function loop, I cannot access it. So in setup, I cannot access it. That might be good or bad, depends on the 
depends on the situation. Okay. Yeah. So these are two possibilities on how to to memorize things. Yeah? Global variable or define it as static. You will use it in your task, like I said, you have seen what should be the outcome. Good luck with it. <laughs>